Well, I just wanted to start this video off by saying I know I haven't made a video on the truck in a little while or truck box project or um, the or anything really. Um, nothing really exciting has been happening for about the past year. Um, you know, a lot of life events happened, but just, you know, stuff that really didn't feel like sharing and you know, a whole bunch of funk in my grill. Um, but I just wanted to take the time today, take video really quick and just go over some things that I've changed on the truck because there finally have been some changes and, you know, the weather's finally nice here and it's been raining for like the past month, my truck it, it's dirty and disgusting and I'm not a fan of it. Um, but that's going to change hopefully in a little bit. I'm going to get some free days to wash all of this off in the truck. But I wanted to talk about this. So I got new suspension. And so I've got these really nice coilovers, SPC upper control arms. Um, and then something that was new to the market it's you can kind of see it back here these these leaf springs are parabolic leaf springs um and those are really cool then the shocks that i'm running are actually i don't know if the sticker's still on them yet they're coney 82 series shocks that were adapted from the hilux shocks over into the, I just tripped over my own jack. Um, adapted over to the Tacoma. Um, and they're being sold by a company called All Dogs Off-Road. Um, you can see right there. All Dogs Off-Road parabolic leaf springs. So this whole kit is made by All Dogs Off-Road. Um, the SPC upper control arms are a $700 option, which is... The going price of SPC upper control arms. There's the coil over. Um, so I was just wanted to make this video to kind of highlight these wheels. Um, if you knew my truck at all, you'll notice that these lights are now here. Um, my winch box is trashed. The little mount that I fabricated for it broke, so that's going to be getting changed in the near future. Um, this whole having to plug in a winch and cover it all up and make sure it's all plugged up thing is going to get changed in the future. Um, but since my last video, I've really come to love this ARB front bumper that I put on the truck um, about a year ago. Um, had a couple of deer hitting incidences and took it like an absolute champ um did some body damage right along in here but nothing that's like really noticeable you have to look for it um but i really did want to just highlight this new suspension so again coney suspension or coney shocks and coilovers spc upper control arms and all dogs off-road parabolic leaf springs you know you can see representing all three and there's my instagram um just figured it made the most sense to place it there um and as of right now i have about seven or eight thousand miles on these um springs and everything and i will note uh with the ARB front bumper, the XRC Smitty Built Gen 2 winch with the steel cable. Um, definitely go with the heavy springs. Okay. These are phenomenal. They're not too heavy for my current truck or current setup. Um, this is perfect. Um, the install was really easy. Um, as you can see, I have the classic fender weld or fender liner um cut right there to get this bolt out and i did flip it 
so it's a little easier to get out on the passenger side. Um, the driver side's the same way around as a factory. And I haven't had an issue with this backing off yet or anything about, again, about 8,000 miles into the suspension and doing this. And last time I touched anything under there was 8,000 miles ago when I put it all on. Um, and so obviously this is a little bit more long-term than an initial impressions review. Um, you know, I'm anticipating these wheels or not these wheels, this suspension setup lasting me, oh, easy, another 80 or 90,000 miles. Um, unless I decide, Hey, I want to go bigger. Hey, I want to dedicate this to off-roading. I bought some other stuff. Um, so, yeah, again, the, this Coney suspension, I don't have this rear, the stiffest it can go, because if you don't know anything about Coney, um, they were the original manufacturer for Porsche back in the 1950s on their, on actually Porsche, I'm just going to flip the camera around here actually on Porsche's race team, they were the original manufacturer for their adjustable coilovers, or well, shocks back then. Um, I don't remember the exact dates. I read it on their website before I purchased this. I wanted to look into the company. Um, you know, they're made in Sweden, so they can't be awful. Um, but the overall on these wheels, or not wheels, sorry, I keep saying wheels. I've been shopping for wheels and tires for two months now, and that's all I can think about. Um, but the overall ride quality, um, I don't have the rear shocks as stiff as they can go, but I don't have them as soft as they can go. I have them eh, roughly in the middle, um, because the way you adjust Coney shocks is you actually compress it all the way down and then rotate that upper barrel so this is what i'm talking about by that upper barrel this i'm going to call the lower barrel um be more of kind of the upper sleeve of the shock i don't know i don't know shock parts um i just know leaf springs and shocks and they all go together so the overall quality of it has been absolutely phenomenal um, you know, I, I was off-roading end of October, you know, that's when I got my truck all dirty originally and, you know, acquired some new love dents and whatnot. Um, and it was, it was phenomenal. The, the actual, uh, suspension performed great. Um, and I haven't done anything with like my brake lines or anything to extend them so I haven't actually like done a flex test on it or anything because I'm concerned about that mostly um I still have stock length brake lines and I'm looking to possibly make my own 24 inch um steel braided brake lines uh I've looked into it, it doesn't it seems like a project that I may be able to tackle um and if I, if I do, I might make a video of it. I might not. I might just say, hey, this is how I did it and uh, show you guys what I'm looking at. Um, but it it's not a huge lift overall. Um, it's about, I, I was talking to, um, I want to say his name was Chad um, from All Dogs Off-Road about it. He said it's about a two and three quarter inch lift kit. If you want a three inch lift, um, you can buy their quarter inch spacers and I know I'm going to catch a lot of flack in the, um, in the comment sections about spacers and, oh, they're not good. They'll shatter your shocks and whatnot. I've read everything on Tacoma world. Um, but these are thin quarter inch thick urethane spacers. I'm probably going to get them, um, just to, just to kind of bring that truck the truck up that little bit extra that you know that little bit that it kind of needs um because my next tire size is 
going to be a lar lot larger. I know that for sure. I'm looking at a set of 18-inch wheels instead of the 16s I have it on now. Um, probably going to go with some 18s and a 35-inch tire um, because I'm looking into one tire and it ends up being a 35-inch tire. Um, so going to have to do some cutting, going to have to do some fabrication on the truck. Um, all things I don't feel qualified to do, so I might take it to my local off overland shop, Mill Creek Overland, and have them do it. Um, they have reasonable prices on it all. But again, I'm I'm going to circle back to ride quality now because I don't think I've really talked about it. Um, I've kind of rambled a little here, but the overall ride quality of the suspension. Um, I've had it loaded up before. I've had my chuck box and my tent and everything on the back here. Um, so the overall ride quality when I'm loaded down, ready to go camping, butter, smooth as glass. You hit a bump and you wouldn't know it. It is like, I mean, Rolls Royce has nothing on this. Okay. And I've been in, well, I've never been in a Rolls Royce. My older brother uh had a went rode around in a rolls royce once um and this thing glass you know like you could drink from a overflowing cup in this truck when it's loaded down um but that's when it's loaded down with weight these are overweight springs so what that means is they're meant to carry more weight in the bed than the factory springs um, they're meant to have an overland setup in it full time permanent for the springs to really be happy. Um, and so, and as you can see, I'm wearing my all dog shirt that I got with the suspension. Um, so with all that being said, unloaded the front end smooth. It's amazing. I don't feel any feedback from the suspension. Um, yeah, I'm really, right now, I'm fighting tire balance. So it's not, my suspension is smooth as glass. Real, or really smooth in the front. Just super awesome. In the rear, at, you know, low lower speeds, it's a little bit softer. At highway speeds, it gets a little harsh. But again, these are overweight springs. These are springs that are meant to have a lot of weight on the back so they really they really thrive in that and when they're in that situation they're phenomenal when they're not in that situation you know they're going to be like any other leaf spring lift for this truck you know they're going to ride rough they're going to be stiff and actually i had blocked I had a block lift on the factory springs with an overload spring. And so, um, oh, I actually still have them over here. Um, uh, some of these, they're just like a cheap Chinese, I think. They might be old Timberans. I don't know. Like rubber overload trailer hauling springs or something. Um, and so... They're cheap, from what I can tell. They don't, they don't match like Timbrens or anything. They, it's really weird. Um, but they, that's what I had on the truck before, and my leaf springs were so shot on this truck that they really, that's what was supporting the rear end of the truck. If I had taken those off and left it, the rear end of my truck would have been sitting at factory or lower. Um, cause my springs did this over that overload bar that I had in there. Um, uh, the previous owner of this vehicle had in there. So overall the ride quality did improve, but that's because I went from a heavy trailer setup to, um, went from a heavy trailer setup to a um, typical, like, leaf sprung setup. Now, for all of those who 
are interested in the nitty gritty tech details, I know this is the end-ish area of the video, so I know viewership typically drops off at the end of videos. So for all those interested in the nitty gritty tech details of the leaf springs, quick. So if you notice, I've got one, two, that's it. I only have two springs. Hack. Two. Um, I know for a fact that typical three inch lift leaf springs for this truck are seven to eight leaf springs in a setup. So with that being said, um, seven to eight springs is rough and stiff and painful on your people in your backseat. Because they're going to be pretty much sitting on the, there. I mean, the distance, the back, the bottom of your people are going to be right here. The, where they're sitting is going to be like here. And your rear axle is, oh, probably three foot. So their ride comfort comes from the rear mostly. Um, so with that, with that set up, the parabolic leaf springs um, are going to ride smoother than a eight leaf leaf pack and why they can be so for those of you who don't know the toyota tacoma from 2015 and i pretty much think second gen third gen even first gen tacomas and maybe even the hiluxes i don't know about hiluxes i don't know about first gens i know about second gens and i know a touch about third gens um and so um the factory leaf pack is three leaves on the for this truck factory. So, how is it I can have less leaf springs than the factory leaf pack? And it's really cool because it's all physics, actually. So, um, I'm trying to find something that I could use to demonstrate this. Uh, so the the name parabolic comes from the shape of the leaf. They are, most leaf springs have, are about the same thickness all the way through. Um, they might thin out a little bit at the end, but I don't know if I can get under the truck. I'm wearing my nicer jeans. But if you look, you can see how thick they are right there. And then you can kind of see how they thin out the closer axle you get, or closer to the hanger you get. But the closer to the axle you get, the thicker they are. So it actually uses a geometrical shape called a parabola um, to find the mathematic um, ratio of the parabola to best carry weight. Now, this math equation was first, um, first used in military applications on their very, very, very heavy vehicles. So, you know, your, your Humber is not going to have parabolics on it. It's coil sprung, independent, I think. Yeah, independent, portal axled, completely different. But your, like, MRAP and your heavy wreckers and your big leaf sprung vehicles from the from most militaries actually use a parabolic shaped leaf spring now they'll use 10 20 of them but that's because they are hauling 80 90 thousand pound m1 abrams or whatever their military's tank is they're hauling huge loads you know, loads that aren't even legal for most semi-trucks to run. So, it was, there was a company, there's a small company, I don't remember where, that decided to adapt that math equation for those leaf springs to light-duty trucks. Um... And they were custom ordered for the longest time. You 
You went to them, said, I need these measurements, and they custom built your leaf pack. And it was thousands of dollars for that leaf pack. So what I'm going to call them my friends at All Dogs did because my customer experience with them was phenomenal. I, If they had more stuff for my truck, I would totally go back through them for everything. But they don't have a whole lot of stuff for the second gen Tacomas. They're, they're catered towards, um, you know, I, I don't know what generation they are. But they cater towards like the Nissan Frontiers and they're a Nissan off-road dealer or parts dealer. Um, and they're a really cool company. Um, but they reached out to, I can't remember if it was this company specifically or if it was a different company. Um, they reached out to them and said, hey can you start mass manufacturing these leaf springs for us? And so they worked through that whole deal. I don't know how long it took them, but they finally got a setup for the 2005 to 2020 Nissan Frontiers. Um, because the 2021 Frontiers use a different, use the same frame as a, hold on, it use the same frame as a 2023 Frontier, but not the same frame as the 2020 Frontier. 2020 was the last year of that generation, technically, according to, you know, the frame and everything. So they got, they got Leaf Springs built for that. Um, and then they got in the works, the Coney suspension deal. And... Well, after the Leaf Springs for the Frontiers, they got in works for 2nd Gen Tacomas and 3rd Gen Tacomas. A deal for that. And then somewhere along the way, they got a deal with Coney to be their only United States distributor of their heavy track, well, they call the heavy track um, suspension. So those are going to be your 82s and I think they're 95 series shocks from Coney. Um, I have the 82 series shocks, which are their lighter duty shock. Um, they're more catered towards people who want a bit of off-road or more off-road ability, but want a good or, or good or bad English, bad English. You think I would have learned better. Um, want a better ride quality over what the 95s or 90 series shocks offer. Um, so they, they got those all finalized and released the kit to do the second gen Tacomas. Um, my brother, um, who has one, has an 07 Frontier, actually put a set of parabolic leaf springs on his truck and loved them. And that's what encouraged me to get a set was the fact that he loved them and he works in construction. So he's beating on his truck. He's loading that thing down. He's, he actually broke the factory set of leaf springs because, well, he was about to buy new ones and he, and it was needed or he needed new ones anyways. And he was about to buy them. And so he just, he loaded up the bed with a whole bunch of material and ended up breaking his leaf springs. Um, but his truck doesn't sweat it whenever, um, whenever he's loading it down, it doesn't sweat it. It actually loads down really well. It runs really great off road. Um, and so he, he loved them. And that's what, that's what got me, looking into the possibility of running them. So I found out that they were launching the set of them for this. And at about the same time, I realized I needed new shocks um, and coilovers. So I was originally looking at a Dobinson kit. Um, and it was going to be about two or $3,000 for that kit with the SPC upper control arms and the parabolic leaf springs because... They're about $800 from all dogs. Um, so 
building that kit out was going to be about three grand. Um, the Conies, however, when they finally released them, I ordered them end of Oct end of August, got them about mid September because I ordered them all on my part on why it took them so long to ship this stuff. Once it did, sh once they did get to it, they were able to get it done really quick, which was super nice. But I ordered them the same weekend as Overland Expo and like Memorial Day was the next weekend. So they, as a company, they took pretty much that whole week off um, with limited access to orders. Like I think they were able to order, like if you ordered like a t-shirt or a hat from them, they were going to be able to send you stuff. But bigger orders they weren't able to fulfill. But all said and done, uh, with the SPC upper control arms and the parabolic leaf springs additions to this kit, because um, the base version of the kit is an add a leaf kit with um, just using your stock UCAs, um, which is about a, I think this basic version of this kit is. I don't want to say the price because I don't remember it. So I don't want to get be wrong and make them look bad and make them look like they're undercharging or make them look like they're overcharging. But that's the basic version. Then they do offer another... They offer their Broverlander uh, leaf springs, which are similar to like the Deaver leaf springs for from Old Man Emu. Um, and then they offer... And... You know, obviously they are, and obviously they offer the parabolic leaf springs. Those are the most those are the most expensive option, um, and they offer three upper control arms options using your stock ones, uh, another brand, and SPCs. The SPCs were, I think, about the middle of the road. Maybe might have been the expensive ones. They were about seven hundred dollars, six ninety nine ninety five, which is what SPC charges for them. And literally everywhere else charges for them. So I'm. This is not like a cheap kit necessarily. Um, all said and done is about twenty five hundred dollars. So is it cheap? No, not in my mind. But I don't. I don't have a lot of expendable income. You know, I'm saving for a lot of things like saving for my own house and you know, I've got some other expenses that I'm saving up for. So taking that much out of my bank account wasn't super cheap. Um, on my bank account, that is. And then um the but if you compare it to a setup that's gonna be similar to this, uh two and a three inch lift um, that's going to use, in my opinion, same quality parts. Um, you're probably looking at about four or five grand for it. You know, you're looking at stage, I think it's stage seven icons. You're looking at, um, it, even if you want to piece together your own kit using your own shocks. You know, using good shocks, you're looking at about the same price. Honestly, this is a very competitive price for what you get. Um, I think they priced it perfectly. I don't think it's overpriced. I think it is perfectly priced. Um, so with all that being said and um, all, everything just being, you know, completed and on the truck for a while now. Um, oh my goodness, you can see all the gnats flying around right there. With all that being on the truck for a while now, it really is incredible the workmanship that has gone into this. It is really incredible the quality overall. And I'm I'm a fan of all dogs. They have phenomenal prices. They have amazing equipment. If you are working with you know, they they do sell stuff for JK Jeeps. Um, they do sell stuff for pretty much every Nissan. Um, and they do sell stuff for second and third gen Tacomas. If you're working with any of those vehicles, um, you're, you can't really find a nicer company. They're a small company, 
Um, if you notice on the shirt, it says all dogs off-road co-op. And if you have any experience with like REI co-op, um, you know, really expensive items co-op, they, they do have a membership like them. Um, it's, which I'm not a member. Um, I'm heavily thinking about it. I was given a little bit of a tip recently, uh, that they're working on a dividends program like REI has. Um, try not to blind you guys. Here, spin this way. They're working on a dividends program like REI has right now. Um, no clue when that's going to be finalized, but that's coming up probably within the next year or two. They're going to have that all ironed out. Um, they might even have it ironed out earlier. The I don't know. I wasn't giving much more information than that. Um, and so, but membership, like a full membership with them is, from what I was reading on their website, I think it's a one-time fee. It's $100, and you're a member, and, you know, you'll get a dividends or dividends like REI if you buy stuff from them. You know, same, they're looking at doing the same kind of deal as REI. Um, so, in my opinion, that makes it all worth it. Um, they are a fantastic company. And, you know, I honestly, I would totally, totally um, work with them on more stuff if they had more stuff for my truck um you know so but again just fantastic company overall they they really hit it out of the park with this, this uh, suspension system um and i really do think that they're a fantastic company to work with and to know, um, I actually came across them a long time ago when I was like, they sell full kits to Titan swap your frontiers. Uh, so, you know, I was looking at frontiers for the longest time. I learned about how, what a Titan swap was, and I wanted to do that on my frontier if I ever bought one. Um, so they sell full kits from what I can see, same quality as this kit, wonderful performance. Um, I know that these guys do a great job with everything that they have. Um, so that's enough of me rambling. Um, I don't know when I'm going to get some time to post content again. This is kind of... It's cold out. It's getting really cold out. I'm not wearing a jacket right now. Um, and it's only supposed to get colder this year. I do. For these. I do want to. Sorry. Dogs barking and everything. I do want to do a bit of a review on these. Um, they're the Cooper Discover AT3s and 265 R16. Um, and they, these are the FN Koenig's counter steer wheels. So I do want to do a bit of review on the tires and I'll throw in a little bit about the wheels in that. Um, don't know when that will be because limited time right now, but overall this is, I love this truck. This truck has been great for me. Um, it's done everything I've asked of it and then some. Um, the tire, I will just note really quick, the tires have been great. Um, so look forward to doing that review later down the road. I might even post it, just do it today and post it today. So thank you for watching. And if you have any questions about the Coney suspension with the all dogs parabolic leaf springs and SPC upper control arms, let me know. Um, and I'll try to answer everything that I can with the knowledge that I can or the knowledge that I have on this and my personal opinions. So thank you for watching and have a wonderful rest of your day.